Hi everyone. In this lecture, together with the next lecture, I will talk about how to do the most important objective of having a data guard, which is role transition, switch over and fill over. In this lecture, I will describe the switch over, and in the next lecture, I will talk about the failover. In this lecture, you should learn how to do the following. Describe the data guard switch over. Switch over to a physical standby database using the SQL plus. Switch over to a logical standby database using the SQL plus. And perform switch over using the broker. In data guard, role transition is performed by doing one of the two procedures. Switch over or failover. You implement the data guard in first place to eventually perform one of those two procedures. In this lecture, I will show you how to carry out the switch over. In the next lecture, we will discuss the failover. Switch over is the process of changing the primary database to a standby role and changing one of your standby databases to the primary role. This procedure is a planned procedure. You, as a DBA, could decide to do it as part of testing the DR solution, or when some changes are planned in the primary database system side. After the switch over is finished, the new primary database will send the redo to all the standby databases in your configuration. When you want to start a switch over, you always start it on the primary database. Once you start the switch over, the primary database will send all the remaining redo to the standby databases. And eventually, it will send special type of redo called end of redo record or EOR. When the standby database receives the EOR, it knows that it can now take the primary database role. You need to be aware about an important warning. If you switch over to a logical standby database, the physical standby databases will be disabled and they must be recreated from the new primary database. But this actually makes sense because the physical standby database is a block by block copy of its primary database. Before you start the switch over, you are recommended to do the following. Verify that all the redo has been sent to the standby databases and verify that the apply is catching up. It is also a good idea to make sure that no continuous session is running on the primary database, like a scheduler job or RMAN session. It is highly recommended to create a guaranteed restore point in the standby database. It will be so helpful in case you face a failure in the switch over process. Finally, you are advised to have monitoring sessions to the alert log files of the primary database and of the database you intend to switch over to. I demonstrated in the previous lecture how to verify that all redo log files have been transported to a standby database. I'm just repeating the code here. On the primary database, you get the maximum sequence number in V dollar sign log view, and you compare it to the sequence number in V dollar sign managed standby view. If your data guard is operating in a zero loss mode, you need to check out the V dollar sign archive dist status view. Make sure that the synchronized column is showing yes for your standby database. If you are planning to switch over to a physical standby database, one way to verify that the apply process is catching up is to have a look at the V$ sign managed standby view. Look for the MRP process line. Check out the status column. The value of that column should be applying log. If you see the value of the status column is wait for gap, you cannot switch over until the gap is resolved. In addition, 
the apply must be running in real time. If you have configured a delay, restart the apply process using the no delay qualifier. In addition, the apply process must be running in real time. If you have configured a delay, restart the apply process using the no delay qualifier. When you are planning to switch over to a logical standby database, to verify that SQL apply processing is catching up, look at the $sign managed standby view. The mining SCN value should be the same as the latest SCN colon value. If there is some difference, check the status of the reader process in the $sign log stdby underscore process. After doing the preparatory steps, you are now ready to go with performing the switch over. First, you verify that the target standby database is ready for a switch over. This is optional step, but it's highly recommended to do that. To do that, you use the command alter database switch over to standby database unique name followed by verify keyword. This statement checks on the conditions that the switch over needs. If you receive database altered message, this means all good, all conditions are met. If you receive aura 16475 error message, you need to check the alert log file. You should see some warnings over there. You study those warnings and take decisions on them. One example of the warnings you may receive is that the database flashback in the standby database is not enabled. It is recommended to resolve any warning you receive. The switch over may finish and succeed if you ignore the warnings, but resolving the warning will be so helpful in case you faced unexpected issue during the switch over. If the statement returns a different error, this means the standby database is not ready for a switch over. You must resolve the root cause of the error before you proceed with the switch over procedure. The second step is to start the switch over process in the primary database. You do that with the alter database switch over statement. After this statement is finished, you open the new primary database for read write. In the fourth step, you mount the new standby database and start the apply process. The switch over procedure in case of a logical standby database is a little bit different. First, prepare the current primary database for a logical standby database row. You do this with the statement alter database prepare to switch over to logical standby. This statement notifies the current primary database that it will soon switch to the logical standby role. After executing that statement, keep checking on the switch over status column in the $sign database view and wait till its value is preparing switch over. After that, on the standby database, you issue the command alter database prepare to switch over to primary. Wait till the status in the $sign database view becomes to logical standby. At this stage, the switch over procedure can be cancelled. If you want to cancel it, use the command alter database prepare to switch over cancel. When the switch over status in the $sign database view in the standby database becomes to primary, you can finalize the new role of the database. To do that, you issue the command alter database commit to switch over to primary. Then you start the SQL apply on the new standby database. Keep in mind that the SQL apply guard is set to all in the new standby database. As you know, this setting disallows the users from performing read-write transactions on the non-replicated objects. 
If you need to allow read-write operations on the logical standby, you will have to set the guard manually to standby in the new logical standby database. If the broker is configured in your data guard, switch over procedure is so simple. And it is the same regardless of the standby type you're switching over to. First, you use the validate database in the DGMGRL command prompt. This statement will verify that the basic switch over requirements are fulfilled. After that, you just issue the switch over command. And that's it. The broker will internally communicate with all the databases and perform the required tasks to complete the switch over procedure. This is an example on how the broker is in general simpler than SQL Plus in managing your data guard configuration. So that's it for switching over in data guard. In the lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Describe the data guard switch over. Switch over to a physical standby database using the SQL Plus. Switch over to a logical standby database using the SQL Plus and switch over using the broker. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the other role transition, that is the failover. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture.